So this might be the most vibey studio setup I've seen so far. My friend Yukon and I used to work together at East West way back in the day, and now he has his own studio set up in Los Angeles in Highland Park, and it is a trip. Now, Yukon, I actually use him to master all of the music that I mix or that I produce. I've been sending it to him for a while now, and he does an excellent job. You know, I've been looking for a good excuse to go back out to Los Angeles to see my buddies out there, and I figured... You seem to like these videos a lot because the channel just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So thank you guys so much for liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me and it's it's been a blast making these videos. So thank you guys so much and let's go check out this super vibey studio setup with Yukon. So how long have you been in this building now? Uh, just under a year and a half. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, man. Welcome to the basement. Oh, man, this floor is amazing. It's got a bunch of Dude, old this is awesome. Covers. The facility is Lemon Tree Studios. It's a bunch of studio lockout rooms that all share this communal spot. It's got a cool oh, kind of mix wow. of people here. Kitchen, bathrooms, everything's kind of taken care of. Hang out here and talk shop here. Got you know, there's a gaming over here, and then there's a whole little work area over here, too. So, if you need somebody to get away from everything. <laughs> oh, okay. A little songwriter booth. Yeah. And is this like, this is like an old school arcade game. Yeah, it's got a bunch of everything. Frogger, Pac-Man. Dude, this is beautiful. This is a, got a very unique... Yeah, it's got unique a... Unique cool... style. How many rooms are here? Uh, I want to say like 12, roughly. There's some people who do mixing and mostly production. There's a lot of songwriters and producers. Is this office office area up here? Yeah, this is kind of like an office. Office, bathroom, yeah. kitchen, sort of common area. Yeah, exactly. And there's- Water cooler. Water cooler, it's important, you know, congregate. Um, I, I'm looking at a Keurig. Is that the, is that the move? There's a Keurig here. I honestly, I keep a French press in my studio. Yeah. And, uh, don't really mess around too much. You know? <laughs> and then right upstairs is a coffee shop. Yeah, there's a coffee shop. And the building itself used to be an old uh, camera place and they used to develop film down here. Yeah, this is gorgeous, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? All right, so where's so, the magic happen? All right, let's go check the studio out. Oh, wow. This is really cool, man. Yeah, so there's... Large studios, small studios, there's PMC, a uh, monitoring company has like a full on Atmos rig behind that door, and then there's another live room down there that we can pipe in through Dante Ethernet. Oh wow. To our studio. Oh wow. And so, Ed, who just was walking through, he's uh, tracking guitars and stuff down there. Today. That's, awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, it's cool. Holy cow, look at these doors. Yeah, air lock. Look how thick that is. How they're heavy. That is thick. <laughs> it's, and honestly, it keeps the sound pretty well contained. It's, I like it. Well, Holy, what the heck? <laughs> this is incredible. Hold on, before we go in here, how much of this is you? I think I can uh, tell which one, which parts of it are you and which part of it came. But yeah. how did the room come when you got it? Uh, the room came pretty bare. Uh, here, let's turn some lights up a little bit here. Um, oh yeah. So the clouds are built in, air conditioning comes with it, lighting, work lights, the top LEDs uh, were all part of it. The room's built to uh, pretty specific standards. It follows a golden uh, mean ratio, if mm -hmm. that means anything to anybody, but, uh, and it's what, like I think, Maybe like 20 feet this way and 16 to 17 feet yeah this, this is way. a really solid sized room actually this is almost the exact same size room as mine yeah and i mean i don't know how tall your ceilings oh the are, ceilings are way higher in here yeah, yeah. low ceilings yeah so i mean it's nice because there's space obviously and you know my neighbor over here used to have uh, a whole bunch of keyboards and like a whole rig set up and an electronic drum set and everything this is so cozy and also trippy
Yeah, we gotta keep it vibey for sure. <laughs> uh, these are crazy. Where'd you get the idea for these clouds? Uh, and just I gotta, so everyone's clear, we're talking about the actual yeah, clouds. Yeah, the puffy clouds. <laughs> uh, those are made by a friend of mine and a client, uh, Vernice. She's super cool. Um, and she makes them to order and it's pretty smart. There's LEDs inside and it's just some framing and it's Dude, some, can some you solid. can you give me a link in the description for that? Hook you up with link her. me in the description, yeah, everybody. Absolutely. Check these out. These things are crazy cool. So you're doing mastering, but you're also doing like yeah, you're equipped for podcasts as well. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, got some experience with podcasts, and before the before times, you know, we were able to do uh, maybe two, three people in here, uh, everybody on their own mic, piped in. I could kind of telecommute everything if we needed to do like phone calls or Skype calls, and have everybody working. Since then, uh, I've done a number of Zoom sessions in here where I'm recording a host, I'm over here, and we have somebody on the phone or on the line on the other end, and we record everything. That's great, man. Yeah, it's cool. I, that means a lot to me, so um, that's well, good. Well, dude, congratulations. This is, <laughs> hey, ser seriously, this is a really cool room. Really, for me, it's all about being comfortable while I'm working and being able to put the best dude, that's, work out. Yeah, yeah, and with mastering, you know, it is a little bit of a game of less is more. So trying to keep it open, like I like having the place for people to hang out or for me to get away from the record. There's been times with records that, you know, maybe sometimes present problems and you lose a little perspective up here. It's nice to even scoot back. Or oh, just absolutely. Turn around and, munch your sandwich or whatever you got going behind you and uh yeah man you know think about it so the space is important and having room for the music to really kind of air out and kind of show me what it needs to do you know? what's the uh, story with this thing what the the tapestry <laughs> yeah <laughs> where'd you get that uh, i mean i've always been a fan of a good tapestry and when i first moved in i was thinking more of like a rustic kind of wood with the cement vibe and it's kind of what spoke to me in here. Again, when my friend Bernice kind of came through and put these up while I was working on a record. Tripped it out. I took it in a whole nother direction that I didn't even know I loved. And uh, yeah, it's, yes you did. And you know, you know me, I'm kind of a nature guy. So it's really kind of brought the organic feel that I wanted yeah, to dude. life in a whole other way that I didn't really expect. Screw your lights up, but like we go into record mode here. <laughs> and like I'm under the atmosphere, I'm able to kind of keep it and we're, you know, underneath the building, so it can get a little claustrophobic if you're not careful. Yeah, this is some, this is really, really vibey. Yeah, that's the goal, you know, and to kind of keep it simple. These are the Dyn Audio uh, Lid 48s. Uh, I like them because they're three ways. I was going to go for the ones that I used to pull out of the lounge at East West, yeah. but... Um, oh, they kept those in the lounge, that's right. Right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I loved them. They yeah, they're incredible. What what Those are BM15s for anybody who cares, but uh um these were recommended to me because they're of that same kind of family and feel. They're not ported, which is kind of nice for mastering because you don't get any kind of weird resonance. Okay. And they're three-way, which was a big one for me and it was recommended to me by a couple different angles uh that maybe the three-way might be good for mastering, especially for the detail and vocals and that kind of frequency range, you know, mm. from mids. So I really like these. Uh, I tell everybody they punch above their weight class. They're not the most expensive speaker on the market, but they really do well. That's great. What What's the model again? The Lid 48s, L Y D. Lid 48s. They make a couple different smaller ones, and I think these are the only three ways. Yeah, I, I really like those that size speaker. Yeah. Once it gets bigger than that, I'm a little. What are the seven inch woofers? Yeah, seven or eight. Um, probably seven looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that my sweet guy, so. size. I yeah, well, I was worried. Big. This is a big space like we were just talking about. So I was worried and I had tried some other bigger monitors that were cool, but they didn't really, they were a little too clinical at times. Yeah. Uh, they were really expensive, which is kind of a big factor. These were a good balance with the brand I trusted. I was instantly out. blown away by how much they fill the room for being this yeah. tiny little near field over here. That's great. And honestly, the tower itself is part of it. To me, I was going to you know? say, tell me a little bit about this construction underneath <laughs> here. This is the craziest, most industrial, probably strongest speaker stand I've ever well, seen. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I there's been a few earthquakes since I moved in, so <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah, uh, for sure. The so you built came, these? Yeah, I built them. I went to Home Depot and just kind of went all out. That's but, hilarious. Uh, 
I was looking at speaker stands of all kinds. I'm kind of particular at the height that yeah. I want. Yeah. So uh, I had dialed them in on some kind of cheap onstage stands that I had mm -hmm. to where I liked them. But the problem was anytime I would kind of like come over here to plug something in, I would risk a, a nudge or anything. And because of the way that the room works, any pivot off center is gonna just throw it all off. Yeah. And so I needed something solid, obviously, with something part of it. But way back when we were working at East West, actually, somebody from Oceanway, their uh, mastering engineer who worked out of Oceanway, recommended uh, cinder blocks. They're the cheapest and best speaker stands. And when I was researching sound anchors and some other speaker stands, those are all upwards of five thousand dollars for speaker Ooh. stands. There was a little bit of math involved in terms of trying to calculate which ones. I did look around for cinder blocks that had something different about them other than just the square and yeah. found these and grabbed them and kind of worked out. And Home Depot? Home said? Depot, yeah. I had some help from the PMC guys uh, about just they showed me up. some pictures. No, I can't. Yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd be really helpful of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, they uh, they showed me, um, Spider over there showed me that he had done a studio back when he was in the East Coast that he built basically everything, the desk and everything out of wood like this in cinder blocks. And we had talked about kind of the physics of it and how it worked. So that led me to this kind of platform design. And what I really did find with the whole thing when I put them in first, because it was a little bit of a faith move, you know, I could yeah. really move them around once I got them set up. Uh, I found that they are sound incredible. Like I was worried about these being kind of like bassy ported type things and mm -hmm. throwing off the frequency response of the room. But what they really did, and especially if we step back a little bit, it they built the speakers into the room itself the cement floor yeah and the sound itself is so anchored in that there is a little bit of resonance especially kind of the low end but it's more just kind of extra oomph and push and punch and i i couldn't be happier honestly with how they turned out the trick is wash them before you bring them in yeah uh, spider webs yeah spider webs just they're dusty yeah. and then i got some like gloss clear gloss kind of wet stone paint just slopped it all over them and cool Put some vinyl between the speakers and the floor and the cinder blocks and it's a pretty easy fix uh so tell me about this desk the desk is actually part of the instrument that i've built in here and it's oh obviously yeah. it stands out that's you know i work sitting down with the speakers sitting where it should be but it's really nice sometimes when you're printing alt mixes or let you know doing all the formatting that's involved with mastering to stand up and work so yeah non-critical listening work yeah exactly and it's really convenient for this and then we had that at east west and that's where i really was able to like put that's a guitar on right. and work yep I, that was a big thing for me so and then this one is also a standing desk and has kind of been in the family for a bit so i kind of adopted that and so yeah that's a big part of it for me having a simple workspace you know something just meters Hard drives and, the and this is called uplift desk uplift yeah they make pretty good stuff for everybody watching adam is my mastering engineer <laughs> so i use him on all of the stuff that i produce and that i mix and i refer stuff to him i personally don't like mastering i try to do as little as i can on my own project so i really like having somebody else well, who's mean, really into the process would, my specialization i've realized is now finished records it's finished products finished, yeah uh from everything as you know like to packaging it up and sending out the master zip folder to making sure that the mix is gonna really just do its best everywhere it goes yeah so if you have some music and you're looking to you're oh, not yeah, really obviously. sure about the mastering process go over to blue oak yeah mastering.com yep and you can follow adam at Mastered by Yukon. Mastered by Yukon yeah. on Instagram? Yep. Cool, man. So you're rocking, What what's this computer? This is just an iMac. Uh, the nice thing about mastering is it's not terribly huge on the uh, computing power. Something like mixing yeah, really does take great. something. So I've been able to stretch my iMac almost four or five years now. It's great. It's, it's dialed in. I know exactly what needs to be running to keep it working. I have meters all over it. I have 
software that does cool things just to you know show me my mouse and make my workflow ultra st streamlined. You have a very concise and organized uh, setup here between the hard drives, the interface, your meters, the port. Yeah. Like this is really, really smooth. Now tell me a little bit about all this stuff sitting up here. Well, uh, the most important thing that I use is the meter, the Clarity M, uh, TC Electronics. Clarity M, okay. Uh, I have plugins that can do the same thing, but it's it's annoying to have to pull up a plugin to look at loudness and then pull right. up another one to look at, you know, something like Spectrum and things like that. No, so. I totally get it. I Sometimes I'll use FabFilter Pro L just to see the luffs because I don't yeah. have any other way right. of seeing it. Yeah, and I have, you know, yeah, I have a bunch of... By the way, I love the term luffs. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's really an interesting concept, actually. <laughs> luffs is... Like, luffs is how most of us are metering or measuring loudness and relative to, like, uh, streaming. Yeah. But most streaming services, like Spotify, for example, uses Og Vorbis. You know, that's their codec, so it doesn't. they're not thinking in terms of luffs. They're thinking in terms of proprietary yeah, Spotify loudness. Yeah, it's just loudness. you can never win. Like yeah, between no. all of the different yeah. ways that and it comes out. Honestly, like of all of this, like my biggest philosophy is just aiming for that sweet spot. Like anybody who's yeah. worked with gear, anybody who's worked with recording equipment mm -hmm. uh, in the analog and digital world, that everything has a sweet spot. Even the room, you know, there's a certain decibel that comes out of that speaker that activates this room in the right way and it right. all becomes so uh the point is to get the record to that sweet spot to where no matter what luffs it ends up at or no matter right. what like system if it's in the hi-fi system or like a club system or whatever it's in that sweet spot and it's going to feel good no matter what that's awesome man yeah so this helps then we also have one you know we can see kind of like phase correlation so this is my song so this is in phase right we're all good it looks pretty good to me on the meters <laughs> i guess uh, you know, and then there's a kind of overtime, and this is more uh, useful when you're bouncing. Um, it'll show you over time as it bounces. Uh, I honestly don't use bounce to disc in Pro Tools or like an offline bounce at all. I do everything kind of routed internally. Yeah. What was the uh, TC Electronics? Clarity. Was that a reverb that you were using at East West that you loved? Oh the yeah, 6, the S6000. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which has also got some really cool mastering capabilities if you were to go that kind of They seem route. like they make good stuff. They make guitar pedals too, though. I think yeah. they're pretty good. Yeah, no, they, they don't mess around. You've got your, your mastering rig, your meter, interface drives. To me, I'm going to make a wild guess here. Yeah. To me, this iPad is, this is business. A email, alert, text, something comes across so it's on its own screen. Is that what's going on there or is that baseball? That's baseball. Uh, <laughs> that is what it's doing right now. Uh, a lot of times it just kind of sits off. Uh, it's an old iPad, so it's not the most not fun to useful. use. Is yeah. that a mini? It's a mini that I yeah, bought I with Frank Ocean one. stuff at uh, East West to kind of pass the time on those sessions. So That's like, hilarious. Uh, yeah, I used to watch a lot of Family Guy on that. Um, so yeah, it's baseball, and then I have this cool, uh, it's actually a visualizer for my computer, but they make an iPhone app that reacts to sound and stuff it's kind of, oh wow yeah so when i'm really feeling it i'll put it on and it's kind of reacts to the room and kind of fun to watch all right a couple quick questions for the comment section i know yeah people are going to be asking yeah what are these lights and where'd you get them uh i got those from this is the most la thing i'm ever gonna say uh a native american spirit lodge in laurel canyon that is cool it's really cool no i like the uh symmetry of it all i like the kind of energy that they provide and yeah it's super i mean obviously it's super vibey in here what is this thing that's uh that is a humidifier that oh, okay scented oils in, yeah. oh okay that's what's the thing underneath it thing under it is an air purifier air purifier uh, some sort of essential is that like essential oil humidifier yeah so the air purifier i use because we are underground Yes. And when it gets a little dirty in here and gets a little funky in here, it's really nice to just be able to clean the air. Yeah, quick. absolutely. All right. So then obviously podcast lounge, chill area, yeah. and then you've got storage. Yep. And what, what else is in here? Where'd you get this piece too? This is actually really cool. This uh, was a very long search from the moment I moved in. I knew I needed something like this to store 
uh, more or less just like cleaning supplies. Yep. Uh, which is a closet huge stuff. Studio. Yeah, and that is one of the small downsides of the studio is there is no real storage to put anything. Right. So, uh, and then I have here's the podcast setup, and over okay, here, nice. old spare hard drives. And you got the base. Base the old here, base. just in case. This is a lot nicer than I. I mean. I don't want to say I expected less, but dude, this is a really nice spot. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it is something that is kind of coming to its own life, and I really enjoy kind of being able to make or at least work on music here. Yeah, it's um, awesome, man. Well, thank you for having me, and if you are looking for mastering, <laughs> blueoakmastering.com. Yep. Follow Mastered by Yukon on Instagram. On the website, you've got forms and you can email yeah. and all that stuff. If yeah, the website definitely has a real easy form just to reach out to me, tell me what's going on. Um, I have a membership for people who are putting out music all the time, which is kind of cool. So what's that? How's that work? Uh, you basically get four songs mastered a month and you pay monthly. And so it comes out nice. really cheap. That's great. Yeah. Well, go check out the website and... Um, just follow this guy. I mean, look at this room. This guy, this is crazy. I'll, I just uh, made the trip. I'll get out of here. <laughs> See you, buddy. See ya.